So next we're going to talk about the process of DNA replication. And for this, we're primarily going to be talking about prokaryotes just because it was discovered first in them and it's just a little bit more simple of a process. However, we will also discuss eukaryotes later and many of the overall um, events that happen are going to be conserved across both of these. So first of all, let's talk about some of the components and probably the most important are the DNA polymerases. These are enzymes that are involved in adding nucleotides, we call them NTPs for the nucleotide triphosphates, to the growing DNA strand. And they do this in a very specific order. They have to go from the five prime end to the three prime end. And we'll discuss more of this in a little bit, but they can only go in this direction. They can only add them in this direction. They also have some other functions which will become important later. And one of these important functions is to help repair DNA. Many of them have proofreading functions and they can literally uh, scan the DNA, remove in, uh, errors and replace them. So um, DNA Pol 1, 2, and 3 all need existing strands to build off of. So they need this template uh, to begin with. They need something to bind to. DNA Pol 1 was the first replication enzyme discovered. And this was by Kornberg, Arthur Kornberg in 1957 and he won the Nobel Prize for this. In prokaryotes, five total have been found and they are all for um, slightly different purposes or in different organisms. DNA Pol 3 is a really important one and we call this a holoenzyme. And what a holoenzyme is, is just a one function but it has many different multiple subunits, each of which are controlled by different genes. So the major steps of DNA replication are first you need to unwind the DNA. Next, you need to initiate DNA synthesis, and this primarily occurs using an RNA primer. The replication of DNA is continuous on one strand and discontinuous on the other, and we'll talk more about what that means. And then lastly, we have proofreading and error correction. So let's talk about each of these in more detail. So first, the very first thing you need to be able to do is unwind the DNA helix. There are a number of different proteins, we call them single-stranded DNA binding proteins, that will bind DNA. In prokaryotes, they bind at the ORI, or the origin of replication, and their job is to open up and to deep stabilize the helix. The DNA is actually unwound with proteins called helicases. And upstream, um, what might happen, okay, you're unwinding this upstream of where you have the DNA, then it might become super coiled. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want this extra coiling to happen. And so it's relaxed by what we call DNA gyrase, a protein called G DNA gyrase. The way that it works is that it makes little cuts upstream, which will undo the twists or knots, and then the strands are resealed. And this tension, upstream tension, is released through this process. So first of all, the RNA primer DNA polymerase needs a primer with a free 3' prime hydroxyl group in order to elongate the nucleotide chain. Remember, we're always going from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. So what they do, what happens is there's a short segment of RNA, maybe 10 to 12 nucleotides, is synthesized first on this DNA template. Okay, so you can see here in this orange color, this RNA template or RNA primer will be made is directed by a form of RNA polymerase called primase, and this is unique in that it does not require a free th three prime end like everything else, like this DNA polymerase does. Later on, we'll talk about um, this RNA primer gets clipped out and replaced with DNA, and so at the end of this, this will be 100% DNA, not the small seg segments of RNA. So the replication is both continuous and discontinuous depending on which strand of DNA you're talking about. Remember, the DNA strands are anti-parallel to one another. So what's 5' prime to 3' prime one direction is going to be 3' prime to 5' prime the other direction. DNA replication can't occur in the opposite direction. It can only go 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And so this continuous strand, the strand that is able to go 5' prime to 3', prime, we'll call the leading strand. Now, however, this other strand, it cannot go from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. It must go 5' prime to 3'. Prime. 
So what happens is you just get this series of short um, replication that is going from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And we call these little segments Okazaki fragments after the scientists who discovered this process. In each of these Okazaki fragments, the replication is going to occur in a similar manner. You're going to have RNA polymerase, this primase, come and lay down this RNA primer. DNA POL3 can then go and extend this, uh, and they're usually fairly short regions. Um, so this discontinuous synthesis, like I just mentioned, requires these RNA primers, and it has these, it forms these Okazaki fragments of DNA. DNA POL1, one of the DNA polymerases, removes these primers, these RNA primers, and replaces the missing nucleotides. Then we have another important enzyme called DNA ligase. The job of this enzyme is to uh, join or put together these Okazaki fragments so that there is no break in the backbone of the DNA. Then lastly, we have proofreading and error correction. So when this replication happens, it happens pretty quickly and synthesis is not perfect. Sometimes a non-complementary nucleotide is accidentally inserted. So many of the DNA polymerase have, polymerases have the ability to detect and excise or remove a mismatched nucleotide. And the proofreading function of these polymerases is pretty good. The initial mutation rate that we tend to see is about 1 in 100,000 base pairs uh, is accidentally put or the wrong base is put in. However, after proofreading, it's only about 1 in maybe 100 million base pairs. And these um, are just going to be random uh, mutagenic events that happen, and they're going to provide the raw material needed for evolution to happen. So we talked about many of the different proteins in this unit, and many different uh, enzymes, but really the important ones that you need to know for DNA synthesis is, first of all, DNA polymerase 1. This is the enzyme that is responsible for literally laying down the tracks of DNA, attaching nucleotide to nucleotide. The single-stranded binding proteins are important for destabilizing the helix and to separate the two strands of the helix. The DNA helicase is important for unwinding the DNA. And then the RNA primers are also important. They uh, lay down the tracks so that the DNA polymerase has something to sit on and build off of. Uh, other important ones, DNA gyrase will work upstream to help relieve any of the supercoiling that we might see.